Working on movie sets is supposed to be a dream come true, but co-stars can quickly make it a nightmare by making mean comments, screaming at people, or literally pushing someone around. Here are the top 10 celebrities who exposed their rude co-stars. Rebel Wilson's book, Rebel Rising, was released this year and caused quite a stir when it exposed some new information about an already controversial figure. Wilson held absolutely nothing back when she titled a chapter, Sasha Baron Cohen and Other A-Holes. The pair worked together on the 2016 film Grimsby and Wilson claims it was not a fun experience. The actress claims Cohen humiliated her on set and in the film, something Cohen has reportedly denied. Apparently Wilson had a no clause in her contract and yet Cohen would ask if she wanted to do it frequently. Upon returning for reshoots, the actress says she felt disrespected while there, so much so that when the movie did come out, she almost did nothing to promote it and has allegedly never even seen it. This isn't the first time a controversy has been attached to Cohen's name. He's actually known for quite a few, but a major one was the incident with the ashes he threw on the red carpet one year. Isaiah Washington had so much Hollywood potential, but then he made some controversial public comments and threw it all away. You probably know Washington from Grey's Anatomy where he starred as Dr. Preston Burke. Well, that's the show where everything went wrong. According to the book by Lynette Rice, How to Save a Life, The Inside Story of Grey's Anatomy, a fight between Washington and Patrick Dempsey broke out on set, causing the domino effect that led to Washington's firing. According to interviews in the book, one of the men was late to set one day, so the next day, the other decided to get him back and be late. Tensions got really high, and soon the two men were brawling in studio. Washington allegedly pushed Dempsey up against a wall and began shouting in his face, and that's bad, but it wasn't until Washington used a negative term to describe gay people that the fight stopped. The word was used in context of another actor on the show who was known to be gay. Washington ended up a apologizing, but then for some reason used the word again at the Golden Globes. One of his co-stars, Katherine Heigl, spoke about this as her friend was the person being called names. She said, I'm going to be really honest right now, he needs to just not speak in public. Is she wrong? Every time he opened his mouth at this time, it just got worse. Years later, Washington is still using his voice to advocate for causes he believes in, but every once in a while says something that completely misses the mark. That, or he is bringing up his departure from the show again. Megan Fox and Lindsay Lohan worked together for the iconic early 2000s movie Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen. Their confessions that came out after the film painted an interesting picture. Apparently Fox and Lohan did not get along, but Fox tributes that more to their ages than anything else. A few years post film release, Fox went on record saying that the two women might get along better now that they were older. Lohan has given her reason why she was once angry with Fox during filming. Megan was allowed to get a spray tan and Lindsay wasn't, and that made her quite jealous. Charlie Sheen, who you may know from Two and a Half Men, has a confirmed history of not being nice to his partners. Actress Denise Richards is another example of the man's terrible pattern. The pair worked together on Two and a Half Men, fell in love, got married, and started a family. However, things changed in May of 2006. Richards filed a restraining order against Sheen. According to the order, Sheen could only see their family if it was a supervised visit, otherwise Otherwise, he had to stay 300 yards away from them at all times. The reason Richards had to get the restraining order in the first place was because Sheen allegedly said some violent things to her and handled her roughly. Similar situations would happen later on in Sheen's career with different women. She would also gain public attention by making odd claims and statements. Eventually, he was let go from the CBS show. Jeanette McCurdy co-starred with Ariana Grande on Nickelodeon's show Sam and Cat based on their characters from other popular Nick shows. Again, these two did not always see eye to eye on set, sometimes not even seeing each other for a week. McCurdy's memoir, I'm Glad My Mom Died, dropped in 2022 and dropped some major info about Ariana along with it. According to the book, as Sam and Cat was in its first bit of filming, Ariana's music career started taking off, leading to Ariana suddenly not being around as much, leaving McCurdy to start picking up the slack. McCurdy's book details how Grande 
used to regularly miss filming. According to the book, Ariana was missing filming to go sing at award shows, record new songs, and do press for her upcoming album. While in McCurdy's words, she had to angrily hold down the fort. McCurdy does admit that a lot of her ill will towards Ariana was rooted in jealousy. Jealous that Ariana was able to miss so much filming, but McCurdy hadn't had the opportunity to do that when she had asked in the past. McCurdy writes that she had had to turn down two features she had booked while working on iCarly because the team for the show would not write her out of the episodes so she could film the movies, whereas Grande would sometimes miss a week at a time. Rebecca Ferguson caught the attention of pretty much the entire internet when she shared in an interview that she had once been yelled at by a co-star years ago. At, almost immediately after this interview dropped, the entire internet was scouring Ferguson's movie credits, trying to figure out who this person was that yelled at the Dune star. It's been a few months since and people have decided that the actor in question is Hugh Grant. Ferguson still has not confirmed exactly who she was talking about, but people are looking at what other Grant co-stars have said about working with him and it doesn't make him look good. TV host and actor John Stewart claims Grant's on-set behavior wasn't the nicest in a 2012 interview, going so far as to say the actor would never be welcomed back on the show he had been working for at the time. He also said Grant was giving everyone grief the whole time and he's a big pain. Hugh Grant has admitted to acting rudely on a set. In an interview with Total Film Magazine, Grant shared that while on the set of the movie Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves, he lost his temper with a woman in his eyeline. He says that he thought she was someone that should have known where to be on set, but in reality, it was the chaperone for the young girl on the movie, meaning that woman was just a nice local woman. He said that the incident was terrible and there was a lot of groveling. We know he yelled at this woman, but we don't know for sure if Grant is the one that yelled at Ferguson, but Grant has admitted himself that Renee Zellweger is one of the few actresses he hasn't fallen out with, so there is that. One of the biggest ongoing Hollywood feuds is between Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Vin Diesel. Those two absolutely do not get along. It seems they might be doing better now, but there was once a time when the two men were hurling insults at each other and not appearing in any scenes together in movies they co-starred in. It might have something to do with Diesel giving out unwanted acting advice, claiming that he used a tough love approach to get Johnson's performance to the place it needed to be, something Johnson claims he laughed and laughed at. Johnson has shared that him and Diesel have a fundamental difference in philosophies on how they approach movie making and collaborating, and that is what is causing all the trouble. No matter what is causing the long-standing feud, the two men, they're not good friends. Busy Phillips is one of the many actresses to expose co-star James Franco for his rude on-set behavior. The two worked together on the 1999 TV series Freaks and Geeks, and apparently it was awful. Busy claims Franco acted like a bully on set and once shoved her to the ground. Allegedly while filming a scene where Busy was directed to lightly hit Franco on the chest, Franco, not in character anymore, grabbed Busy, screamed in her face, and then threw her to the ground. Allegedly, he was forced to apologize by the directors and producers. The incident with Phillips isn't the only terrible thing the actor has been accused of. Five women have come forward accusing him of inappropriate misconduct. Franco is definitely in some hot water. Vanessa Marquez is known for her role in ER where she starred alongside George Clooney. Vanessa was on the show for only three of the 15 seasons and she claims Clooney had something to do with her being let go from the show and written off. Vanessa would go on to accuse Clooney of having a hand in blacklisting her from not just the show, but Hollywood in general. Vanessa claims that George Clooney and other actors on the show had acted inappropriately towards her on set. Not necessarily saying that Clooney was the one doing it, she just named him and said that she experienced bad behavior every day while working on the show. Vanessa says she complained to someone about the on set inappropriate actions and claims that that was the reason why she was fired from the show. George Clooney has directly acknowledged these accusations in 2017, he said he had nothing to do with Vanessa being blacklisted and that he actually didn't even realize she was. 
And finally, the award for the most disastrous press tour goes to the Don't Worry Darling press tour. Truly, that tour could not have gone worse. Harry Styles was accused of spitting on his co-star Chris Pine, but even more serious, the lead of the movie, Florence Pugh, allegedly was in a feud with co-star and director of the film, Olivia Wilde. Florence Pugh was noticeably absent during the film's premiere at the Venice Film Festival. She did make a red carpet appearance, noticeably staying away from Olivia Wilde. Florence hasn't explicitly said anything, but her silence at the time was just as loud. Then there's also the matter of Pugh's attitude switch from when the film was first announced versus when it actually came out. Pugh seemed super excited about the project when she first signed on, posting about it online, praising Wilde. However, when it came time to promote the film, she barely said anything. Or if she did say something, she almost always left Olivia Wilde out of it. The few times Pugh had talked about the film, it seemed like she was contradicting something Wilde had said. A big point of conflict came even before filming started, surrounding the casting of Shia LaBeouf. LaBeouf had been accused of bad things by ex-FKA Twigs, and Florence allegedly did not feel comfortable working with him. At first, Olivia said she agreed, and that's why he was fired. However, LaBeouf came forward and pretty much said Olivia was lying, sharing screenshots and a video from Wild that made it seem like she was actually on his side. Around when these got released, Florence confirmed she would not be promoting the film with Wild. There was also this rumor floating around for a while that Florence allegedly took on a more directorial role during filming as Wild was preoccupied with Harry Styles. Number 10, Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase, a popular man thanks to National Lampoon and Saturday Night Live, but he returned to the mainstream when he starred as Pierce Hawthorne in the hit sitcom Community. I genuinely love this show. Chevy? Not so much. And it would appear that his community co-stars would agree with that statement. Around the middle of the show's runtime, Chevy started to complain about his co-stars, especially Mr. Glover. It became apparent that he was more than just angry with Donald, and it was eventually fired for using racial slurs against him. According to himself, aka Troy Barnes, Chevy would often make inappropriate jokes either aimed at him or as a general way to disrupt a scene. Joel McHale told People that before he was fired, Chevy was complaining about his character on the show and how he was being betrayed. The entire cast reminded him that there was no contract keeping him there, which may have been part of what set him off on set. His character was written out in truly humiliating fashion, with his life ending after feeding his geese way too much. If you know what I mean. He was playing with him. Number 9. Tom Hardy Mad Max Fury Road is a forgotten gem in cinema history. It featured little to no CGI despite having some awesome visuals, and it featured some pretty cool performances from its cast like Nicholas Holt, Charlize Theron, and Tom Hardy. Charlize and Tom played the main characters Furiosa and Max, and while their on-screen characters end up working together in the end on set, it was a very different vibe. Tom had a bad habit of showing up late all the time, meanwhile Charlize was a brand new mother who would be there on time every day while their kids were forced to be taken care of by someone else. In a book called Red, Sweat, and Chrome, The Wild and True Story of Mad Max Fury Road, the writer Kyle Buchanan shared an instance on set between Charlize and Tom. Everyone was on set, 8 a.m., ready to shoot, except for Mr. Hardy. But at that point, Charlize took her place and stayed there until Tom showed up three hours later. Now, she didn't move a muscle, and according to the crew, she was beyond furious. When Tom finally showed up, she asked him how he could be so disrespectful and said that they should find this CNX Tuesday a hundred $100,000 for every minute that he held up the crew. She didn't say see you next Tuesday, I really wish I could say the word that did set him off. The word she did say set Tom off and he rushed up to her and pulled out the whole what did you just say to me type thing? Yeah, he didn't say it like that, he's a big tough guy, oh big tough I can't hear so good. Overall, Charlize felt pretty threatened by Tom on set and had an assistant follower around as a buffer between them. When the shoot wrapped, the tension was gone and things seemed to have gotten better, but the difficult shoot combined with the stress is probably why Tom Hardy was never brought back for a Mad Max 2. Number 8. Jeremy Piven Best known for his role as the timekeeper in Spy Kids 4D, All the Time in the World, and nothing else, unfortunately has an overall rough reputation in the world of Hollywood, mainly being pegged as a very difficult man to work with. Several of his co-stars over the years have called out his wild behavior. When Kim Kardashian made a cameo appearance on some indie show called Entourage, I don't know, I've never heard of it, he was very pushy towards her trying to get her contact information. Several past girlfriends and co-stars like January Jones, Kelly Brook, and Rachel Hunter have all agreed that this guy plays the numbers game. He'll go out and get as many phone numbers 
numbers as he can so that at the end of the night he can just text all of them at once and see who responds first. The most troubling incident came when he made a guest appearance on the sitcom Will and Grace, playing Grace's ex-boyfriend. Deborah Messing, who plays Grace, recalled to Andy Cohen, Watch What Happens Live, that her experience with Piven was just plain gross. She claims to have locked lips with a lot of boys in her time on stage and screen, and on the first day of rehearsals, Jeremy tried to get French with her, claiming that he tried to shove his tongue down to her heart. She told him to take it easy, but apparently he refused. Not a cool move at all, and very gross indeed. This man is so mean and self-centered that he once tipped a waiter with a DVD of The Entourage. Seriously, what? Is it like a late night cable television show or something? Ooh. I'm just kidding, I know what The Entourage is. Number seven, Mike Myers. Yeah, baby, it's very shagadelic that Mike's on this list. Despite being a Canadian treasure and the man behind some comedy cult classics like Austin Powers and Wayne's World, this guy's actually apparently a menace on set. According to his Cat in the Hat co-star Amy Hill, Mike had handlers dress his entire trailer and his work area was entirely covered with tenting. Apparently he just didn't want anybody to see him physically, which, hey man, that's fair. If I was in that cat suit with a bum crack in it, I'd, I'd probably want to hide too. His reputation as a difficult Donnie might have something to do with Hollywood blacklisting him entirely, except for his recent show The Pentaverit, which was a show where he basically played half the cast because, yeah, he couldn't get anybody else to get on the show. I I guess. It might be that or it might be the love guru. Who knows? Number six, Bill Murray. Now, Bill Murray has had many public feuds with many co-stars over the years that would qualify him as an entry on this list. One of his more famous feuds was with Charlie's Angel co-star Lucy Liu, but I already covered that in part one of this list. So today, I'm going to talk about his long-standing feud with his late Ghostbusters co-star, Harold Ramis. Harold and Bill famously start opposite of each other in the classic Ghostbusters series, but they had been working together before and after the project, with Harold acting as the director on a lot of projects starring Bill Murray. The moment he was outed as one of the meanest men on set was while filming Groundhog Day. According to cast and crew, Harold and Bill would regularly get into screaming matches over the way that a scene should be filmed or how a line should be said. According to Harold, who passed away in 2014, Bill would show up late to set, well past his call time. Following the film, the two did not speak to each other for decades. It wasn't until Harold was heading out the door that Bill decided to reconcile the friendship, but by then it was a little bit too late. Of course, in the years since, several co-stars, especially female ones, have come forward to call out his extreme temper and snappiness on set, but we could do a whole top 10 about things that Bill Murray is done. Number five, Bruce Willis. Now, Kevin Smith is a director, actor, and an absolute geek in the best of ways. In 2010, he collaborated with Bruce Willis on an action comedy called Cop Out, a story about two cops who get sucked into wild action packed shenanigans. I don't know, I've never seen the movie. According to Kevin Smith, his time on set as a director of the project was not good, and it was mostly due to his childhood hero, Bruce Willis, telling him to snap out of it every time that he would mention his admiration. He went on to claim that Bruce was difficult to work with on set in general, and that a lot of the time it just felt like he was messing up scenes on purpose to throw him off. Apparently, every time Kevin would try to, you know, do his job and direct Bruce Willis, he would just kind of tell him that he had been working in the industry for 25 years and that there was nothing that Kevin could tell him he didn't already know. He then revealed on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno back in 2012 that Bruce had actually confronted him after filming one day and asked him if he wanted to take a swing. The situation escalated to the point that Bruce didn't appear for promotional events or photo shoots, meaning that he was photoshopped into most of the pictures that you see him with with co-star Tracy Morgan, who Kevin claims is actually the only reason he didn't back out of the project. Since Willis was diagnosed with aphasia, the two have been able to patch things up, with Kevin apologizing for his petty complaints. Number four, Ryan Gosling. The Notebook is considered to be one of the better romantic movies ever made in Hollywood. Oddly enough though, the on-screen couple didn't get along at all during their shoot. Turns out they would constantly fight on set and they seemed to have completely opposite ideas on how several of the scenes should play out. Ryan Gosling especially was a little bit of a problem. One day in particular was pretty exciting for anyone who wasn't involved. All drama watchers were sipping their tea. Ryan called over the director and demanded that Rachel was replaced by another actress to read her 
her lines. In front of 150 crew members, he claimed that Rachel just wasn't giving him anything to work with, and the two would constantly yell at each other. Their toxic onset feud somehow morphed into a relationship that lasted for like two years, but anyone who worked on the set blames them for the constant schedule, setbacks, and creating just a terrible work environment overall. So, I don't know. He seems better now that he's been in Barbie. Number three, William Shatner. This one is for all of you Trekkies out there. Live long and prosper. That's all I got. I'm not as geeky as one may think, but I'm well aware of this long-standing feud between William Shatner and his Star Trek co-star George Takai. This feud has lasted for over 50 years, and according to George, it boils down to William being a pre-Madonna attention hog the entire time he was on set. Over the years, George has always been vocal about his opinion on his fellow Star Trek cast and crew. Most of the time, he has nothing but nice things to say and claims to have made lifelong friends from the project, but there is, of course, one that he despises and it's William Shatner, who was the bane of everyone's existence on set. He loved being the center of attention and was apparently very self-involved. He wanted everyone to know who he was. William actually responded to these claims telling people that he believed that Star Trek co-stars were damaging his good name for publicity's sake. But why would people who've barely acted in 30 years like suddenly want to bash you for fame and glory? I don't know if anyone has noticed or not, but William hasn't done much either in a while other than, you know, petition to go to space for real, so good for him. Number two, Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx has been a huge star in the world of Hollywood over the years, working with several acclaimed directors in basically every genre, but like most actors, Jamie had to start somewhere. And that somewhere was in the film Any Given Sunday from 1999, alongside Al Pacino, Cameron Diaz, Dennis Quaid, and Mr. LL Cool J. Cool J and Jamie played teammates in the football-centric flick, and not only do their characters constantly fight on screen, but behind the scenes, they had an actual brawl that ended in the Miami County Police being called in. During one scene, the two were scripted to fight and filmed the first two takes as planned, but just, you know, faking it. However, some offset beef made its way Way in front of the camera when Jamie struck Cool J for real, splitting his lip open and an all out beatdown took place, leaving Jamie unconscious and in the hospital. They had to stop production because they just weren't sure when Jamie would actually you know, come back to be able to film his scenes. When Fox did return to set, it was with a small crew of friends and his manager. Waiting to greet them was LL Cool J and half of Brooklyn, according to the director, who stated that the tension was only settled after the real life football players that the characters were based on came on to set and took care of business. And at number one, Sarah Jessica Parker. For this entry, I'm not allowed to say the title of the show that Sarah and her co-star Kim Cattrall were on, so I'll be referring to it as Schmex and the City, okay? Take the Schm and you know what, you'll figure it out. The Schmex and the City series is remembered for its larger than life fashion and flings. But even better than the show itself was apparently the dramatic onset feud between Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cattrall. There was merely speculation for a long time, but their feud was confirmed when Kim was left out of the HBO Max revival and just like that. The feud reportedly stems from Sarah receiving a massive bonus when she was given an executive producer title in season two. When the other girls found out, Kim attempted to negotiate a new salary. Apparently, the other cast members found that out and they thought it was petty and just basically shunned her on set, refusing to sit with her at lunch. According to Kim, she began to face hardships in her personal life and was having a difficult time coping. The feud was surface level and as time went on, things got better from what we can tell. You'll never guess how Johnny Depp was exposed by one of his co-stars. Like all the other celebrities on this list, he was called out for his rude, entitled, and obnoxious behavior on set. Top 10 Celebrities Who Expose Their Rude Co-Stars Celebrities are just like us, sometimes they don't get along with their co-stars on set. They can be demeaning and completely entitled. So let's look at the Top 10 Celebrities Who Expose Their Rude Co-Stars. First up we have Johnny Depp. Recently, one of Johnny Depp's past co-stars, Lola from the film Blow, came forward speaking about an incident where Johnny mistreated her on set, where he was angry and swearing, and he said some horrible things to her. Then there was a time when he was filming City of Lies, when he got into a massive fight with the location manager of the shoot. He allegedly screamed at him and berated him in front of a full set of people, until Johnny's own bodyguards physically removed him from the scene. Yeah, this is not a good look for him. Him. Johnny should have been the one who loved Hollywood, not Amber Heard. 
Moving on to Leah Michelle. Many people have spoken out against Leah Michelle, but today we're going to talk about the time that Naya Rivera did not hold back when it came to dishing on her issues with her Glee co-star. This all happened in her tell all 2016 book, Sorry Not Sorry, Dreams, Mistakes and Growing Up. Naya claimed that their friendship started to break down because her character started getting bigger plot lines and more screen time. Naya said Leah didn't like sharing a spotlight, which isn't that surprising. She claimed things got so bad between the two of them that they were barely speaking by the end of her time on the show. One of the writers of Glee once said that Leah and I were like two sides of the same battery. She also wrote, we are both strong-willed, competitive, and not just with each other, but with everyone. And that is not a good mix. Then in 2020, former Glee co-star Samantha Ware accused Leah of traumatic microaggressions that made her experience on the show a living hell. Angelica Ross was featured on AHS, but she had a horrible experience with her fellow actor Emma on set. Last year, Angelica provided screenshots of emails and detailed accounts of conversations with Ryan Murphy as he abruptly stopped communicating, during which no one in his company, Ryan Murphy Productions, would offer her any information about her status within the AHS franchise. Angelica then claimed that Emma could be a bullying presence on set, once going so far as to misgender her in front of a director. Angelica, who is trans, first spoke out about the alleged incident during an Instagram Live. She said that she feared retaliation if she actually reported the incident. And she admitted that she no longer spoke to Emma after the alleged onset encounter. Moving on to Tim Allen. Actress Casey Wilson opened up about her disappointing experience working with Tim in the Santa Clauses. She said, it was truly the worst experience I've ever had with a co-star ever. Remembering one moment, she said Tim once finished a scene, then went to a producer to talk about her acting. He goes over to the producer who was standing four feet from me and goes, and I hear him, he says, you have to tell her to stop stepping on my lines. The producer then turns to her with horror on his face and he has to walk one foot to her and he goes, um, Tim would ask you to stop stepping on his lines. She said everyone was walking on eggshells around him on set. When he was done, he was so effing rude. He never made eye contact and never said anything. It was really uncomfortable. Next up, we have Chevy Chase. Chevy has garnered a reputation for being extremely difficult to work with as there are now countless accounts about him being disrespectful to his co-workers. He starred in the show community and he ruffled a lot of feathers on set, which resulted in his character eventually being killed off. He made a deal, AKA got fired with NBC to get him to leave the show following his use of a racial slur during an onset rant about his character arc which eventually resulted in him straight up walking off set. Chevy also never had a good relationship with the showrunner Dan Harmon. After he refused to film an important scene in season three, Dan reportedly called him out at the rap party. Chevy then left an angry voicemail on the showrunner's phone. And because of that, his character was seen no more and that was that. Then there was his time on SNL. He was on Saturday Night Live for two years and after leaving, he came on to host the show eight times. But his eighth time hosting the show would be his last after it was learned that Chevy hit cast member Sherry in the back of the head. Creator and producer Lorne Michaels then ended up banning Chevy from coming back on the show, but eventually he did return for some smaller roles. After hosting SNL in 1991, Steven was banned from the show by producer Lorne because he was difficult to work with. He generally acted like a prima donna in the week leading up to air, alienating himself from the show's cast and just being an all round jerk. Those transgressions might have been forgiven if the actor had delivered anything other than the biggest train wreck in SNL's storied history. While they never got too specific, the crew admitted they did not like working with the martial artist and even found him annoying. The show's cast and crew were on the edge and almost ran an entire show without a host, but they stuck to it and they would ban Steven right after he was done. In fact, the episode was so terrible that NBC had done all it legally can do to ensure that no one ever lays eyes on it again. No clips can be found on the network's website, for example, and the entire episode was omitted when the season was released to Netflix. Yikes. Moving on to Charlie Sheen. It's well known that Charlie has addiction problems, which led to many public meltdowns. But the actor really sabotaged his own career after leaving the hit sitcom under the worst circumstances possible. If you didn't know, he was fired from Two and a Half Men in 2011 after making derogatory comments about the show's creator, Chuck Law. And from then on, things went from bad to worse. 
At that point, Charlie was the highest paid actor on television, making $1.8 million per episode. But he claimed that he was being underpaid and he publicly demanded a 50% pay rise. Now this is the most entitled thing I have ever heard. He was then rightfully fired and Ashton Kutcher was then hired to be the replacement of Charlie on the show. Charlie then went on to multiple news shows to be interviewed. These interviews were filled with weird rants, including him stating that he had a tiger blood and that he was hashtag winning. Next up, we have Thomas Gibson. Thomas had a great television run, but it was all brought down after he was fired from the hit show Criminal Minds. In early August of 2016, Thomas was suspended from Criminal Minds due to an onset physical altercation with one of the show's writers slash producers. It is rumored that he kicked them due to a line of dialogue that he thought it did not make sense, which isn't the appropriate reaction, of course. He was suspended and then later he was fired from the show. Now, this wasn't his first incident on the show though, as he allegedly shoved an assistant director and then got into a verbal altercation. After that, he went to mandatory anger management counseling, but it seems like the counseling didn't help because then he continued those patterns, which ultimately got him fired. Due to this, he hasn't had an acting gig in quite a while, which is a shame because he is definitely talented, but no one wants to deal with him behind the camera because of his temper. Moving on to Shannon Doherty. Shannon's breakout role was in the 90s drama Beverly Hills 90210. But while she was there, she earned a reputation as a difficult actress. Her co-star Jason Priestley described her diva-like behavior in his book. He said that she even complained when a publicist had a town car pick her up instead of a limo. Producer Aaron Spelling characterized her in a slightly more sympathetic light, telling People magazine that she is a very honest person who wears her emotions on her sleeve. And if you ask her a direct question, she'll give you a direct answer. But it seems like her co-stars did not appreciate her honesty. As it was revealed in Lifetime's The Unauthorized Beverly Hills 90210 story, Shannon's co-workers voted her off the show. And then the character moved to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London and never returned. Moving on to Edward Norton. It was said that Edward doesn't work well with others and was instead replaced by Mark Ruffalo. After his departure, Marvel Studios president released a statement hinting at a lack of collaborative spirit on Edward's part, saying we have made the decision not to bring Ed Norton back to portray the title role of Bruce Banner in the Avengers. Our decision is definitely not one based on monetary factors, but instead it's rooted in the need for an actor who embodies creativity and collaborative spirit of our other talented cast members. The Avengers demands players who thrive working as a part of an ensemble, as evidenced by Robert, Chris H, Chris E, Sam, Scarlett, and all of our talented cast. We are looking to announce a name actor who fulfills these requirements and is passionate about the iconic role in the upcoming weeks. With something as big as the MCU, which is literally an ensemble franchise, I think they made the right call. But how can you be an actor and not work well with others? That just does not make any sense. Is your favorite celebrity as nice as they seem? It might surprise you. Here are celebrities who tried to warn us about their co-stars. Wesley Snipes has made a name for himself as an incredible action star, in demand for his skill set in acting and martial arts. But he was soon out of demand once word got around of his onset actions while working on Blade 3. But long before that, there were already some pretty major accusations connected to his name. Halle Berry shared in a 1996 interview with People that she has experienced unkind romantic partners in the past. She claimed that one former partner had caused her to go about 80% deaf in in one ear, and many believe it was Snipes. Barry has never confirmed who the partner was, but one of Barry's former exes tweeted out that she had told him that it was Snipes. However, this should be looked at with a critical eye since that ex in question was also accused of harming Barry. Snipes and Barry dated in 1990 for a short period after working together on Jungle Fever. When Barry was filming Strictly Business while dating Snipes, a production assistant claimed she was crying all the time. So no matter what happened between between Snipes and Barry, the relationship was not a good look for him. It came out later that he can be equally as hard to work with on set. While working on Blade 3 alongside Ryan Reynolds, Snipes allegedly stayed in the Blade character the whole time. Reynolds is of course a known jokester, so that mixed in with the stoic nature of Blade is hilarious on screen, but wasn't so hilarious in person. It probably didn't cause too many problems though, since Snipes was allegedly
allegedly rarely on set. They allegedly let Reynolds improv a lot in the film simply because his scene partner wasn't there. Snipes also allegedly only communicated with the director via post-it notes. All this definitely led to an interesting movie. Sandra Locke's career in the 70s was huge and she wasn't just an actress but a director too. She starred in films alongside Clint Eastwood and the pair hit it off and dated for quite a while. Unfortunately, the pair would break up in 1989 and the aftermath dragged on for a few years, leading to disaster for Locke's career. Eastwood had more pull in Hollywood than Locke did. Soon Locke wasn't getting much work. While it has never been confirmed, many people, including Locke, believe that Eastwood had a hand in this unofficial blacklisting. Because after the breakup, her working life went up in flames and his was completely fine. It wouldn't come out until years later that Locke wasn't the only woman Eastwood had allegedly mistreated. Before dating Locke, Eastwood was married to Maggie Johnson, and according to Eastwood's friend, Fritz Maines, he didn't treat her very well. In the book, Clint, The Life and Legend, there is a quote from Maines about how Eastwood mistreated his wife one time, knocked her clear from the living room into the tub in the bathroom is what it reads. Eastwood denies these claims, and him and Johnson are apparently still friends, actually, and celebrated holidays together years later, according to their children. So do with this info what you will. Charlie Sheen, who you may know from Two and a Half Men, has a confirmed history of not being very nice to his partners. Actress Denise Richards let us know who this man is a long time ago. In May of 2006, she filed a restraining order against her husband, Charlie Sheen. The pair had two young children together, and according to the order, Sheen could only see the children if it was a supervised visit. Otherwise, he had to stay 300 yards away from them and their mother, Denise Richards, at all times. The reason Richards had to get the restraining order in the first place was because Sheen allegedly said some violent things to her and handled her roughly. Similar situations would happen later on in Sheen's career with different women. Isaiah Washington had all the potential to make it big until he made some controversial public comments and threw it all away. Washington starred as Dr. Preston Burke on Grey's Anatomy. He also had a number of film credits under his belt before that. Then as he was filming the drama, everything went wrong. According to the book by Lynette Rice, How to Say a Life, the inside story of Grey's Anatomy, a fight between Washington and Patrick Dempsey broke out on set, causing the domino effect that led to Washington's firing. According to interviews in the book, one of the men was late to set one day, so the next day, the other decided to get payback and be late. Tensions got high, and soon the two men were brawling in studio. Washington apparently pushed Dempsey up against a wall and began shouting in his face, and it wasn't until Washington used a negative term to describe gay people that the fight stopped. The word was used in context of another actor in the show who was known to be gay. Washington ended up apologizing, um, but then used the word again at the Golden Globes. One of his co-stars, Katherine Heigl, spoke about this as her friend was the person being called names. She said, I'm going to be really honest right now, he needs to just not speak in public. I mean, every time he did at the time, it just made everything worse, so was she really wrong? Even years later, Washington is using his voice to advocate for causes he believes in, but every once in a while he says something that completely misses the mark. That or he's bringing up his departure from the show again. Jeanette McCurdy dropped some info about Ariana Grande in her book, I'm Glad My Mom Died. Jeanette and Ariana work on the Nickelodeon show Sam and Cat together. It was supposed to be a hit. However, right as they were filming season one, Ariana's music career started to take off, and suddenly she wasn't on set much. McCurdy's book details how Grande used to regularly miss filming. According to the book, Ariana was missing filming to go sing at award shows, record new songs, and do press for her upcoming album, while in her own words, McCurdy said she had to angrily hold down the fort. McCurdy does admit that a lot of her ill will towards Ariana was rooted in jealousy. She was jealous of the fact that Ariana was able to miss filming and McCurdy hadn't had the same opportunity to do this when she had asked in the past. McCurdy writes that she had to turn down two features she had booked while working on iCarly because the team for the show wouldn't write her out of the episodes so she could film the features, whereas Grande would sometimes miss up to a week at a time. 
Rebecca Ferguson caught the attention of internet sleuths when she tried to warn us about a former co-star. Ferguson revealed that she was once screamed at on set by an unnamed but famous actor. Fans were quick to scour her past films and point fingers. Many fingers were directed at Hugh Grant. TV host and actor Jon Stewart did let us know that Grant's on-set behavior wasn't the nicest in a 2012 interview. Stewart said the actor would never be welcome back on the show that he had been working for at the time. He also said Grant was giving everyone grief the whole time and he's a big pain. Grant himself has actually admitted to on-set tantrums. In an interview with Total Film Magazine, Grant admitted that while on the set of the new movie, Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves, he lost his temper with a woman in his eyeline on the first day of filming. He said, I assume she was some executive from the studio who should have known better. Then it turns out that she's an extremely nice local woman who was the chaperone of the young girl. Terrible, a lot of groveling. We don't know if Grant is the one who yelled at Ferguson, but Grant himself has admitted that Renee Zellweger is one of the few actresses he hasn't fallen out with, so there is that. The iconic photo of Nicole Kidman walking out of the courthouse after divorcing Tom Cruise. It's a meme, need I say more, it just has a feeling attached to it. I don't think I have ever seen someone look so free and happy to be alive. Tom, what did you do to warrant this level of joy at being divorced? Apparently, at the time, Kidman thought everything was going well with their marriage. They had two adopted children, so when she got the divorce papers, she was shocked. Cruise said it was due to irreconcilable differences, but Kidman later told people, our life together was perfect. Kidman did continue saying, That was a great relationship. I think it ran its course. She hasn't shared much about the marriage, stating that it helped her feel safer in Hollywood. No one would dare cross such a big star by hurting his wife. And the 11 years that they were married were important for them and their kids. The Don't Worry Darling press tour, it was the gift that kept on giving. What do you mean Harry Styles spit on Chris Pine? What do you mean the lead actress allegedly had a feud with the director? Florence Pugh was pretty absent during the film's premiere at the Venice Film Festival, but she did make a red carpet appearance, notably staying away from the film's director and her co-star Olivia Wilde. While Florence hadn't gone on record explicitly saying anything, her silence was just as loud. Pugh seemed super excited about the project when she first signed on, posting multiple times online expressing this, but when it came time to promote the film, she barely said anything. If she did, she almost always left Olivia Wilde out of the conversation. The few times Pugh had spoken about the film, it seemed like she was contradicting something Wilde said. A big sore spot that came up even before filming started was around the casting of Shia LaBeouf. LaBeouf had been accused of quite a few bad things by ex-FKA Twigs, and Florence allegedly did not feel comfortable working with him. At first, Olivia came out saying that she agreed and that's why he was fired. However, LaBeouf came forward and basically said Olivia was lying, sharing screenshots and a video from Wilde that made it seem like she was actually on his side. Around when these got released, Florence confirmed she would not be promoting the film with Wilde. There was also this rumor floating around for a while that Florence allegedly took on more directorial duties during filming as Wilde was preoccupied with Harry Styles. That has yet to be impressive probably never will be confirmed. James Franco has found himself in hot water as five women have come forward accusing him of inappropriate misconduct, but we should have seen this coming if his past behavior on film and TV sets is anything to go by. Busy Phillips let us know the kind of person James Franco is from the beginning. The two worked together on the 1999 TV series Freaks and Geeks and apparently neither enjoyed it. Busy claims Franco acted like a bully on set and once shoved her to the ground. Allegedly, while filming a scene where Busy lightly hit Franco on the chest. Franco, not in character anymore, grabbed Busy, screamed in her face, and then threw her to the ground. Allegedly, he was forced to apologize by the directors and producers, but not a good look for him. And finally, we have Patrick Stewart warning us about James Corden years before Corden was cancelled. It's no secret that the talk show host is no longer as loved as he once was, partly due to oversaturation of media, but also due to stories about the way he behaves when the cameras are off. Today, we have heard stories of Corden screaming at restaurant staff and acting in a rude manner, but Patrick Stewart called out Corden for this behavior a long time ago at the 2010 Glamour Awards. Corden 
Chang was hosting the event, and according to Stewart, he wasn't doing a good job. As Stewart went up to present an award, he turned to Corden and basically told him to get his hands out of his pockets and look interested. Corden did answer that in the moment, saying, Oh, you couldn't be more wrong, sir. You couldn't be more wrong, genuinely. And if it looked like that, I'm so sorry, but when you come up and present an award, just get on with it. The tone he used wasn't super nice, so Stewart did retaliate, and then it just got awkward. But years later, Corden has found himself on celebrity hate lists for similar behavior to this, so Stewart called it. Number 10. Michael Keaton. Growing up, Michael Keaton was my Batman. The first two Tim Burton directed Batman movies are legendary, and I'm never going to look at Danny DeVito and not see the penguin. Okay, it's just not gonna happen. One thing I actually never knew though was that Michael was once married to his Batman Returns co star, Michelle Pfeiffer. In fact, Michael actually tried to get Michelle fired from the project after learning that she had been casted as not only a villain, but as his love interest as well. While the split before production was apparently amicable. It was still an uncomfortable situation for Michael to be in romantic scenes with someone that he had well, already been romantic with off screen. At the time, Michael was also trying to get back with an ex-girlfriend and felt that Michelle's presence might ruin his chances. Well, as we all know, he was unsuccessful in getting her fired, the project went great, and the movie was great. So the only bad thing that ever happened was DC telling Tim Burton that his Batman 3 ideas were stupid. Hey man, Robin Williams would have made an excellent Riddler, you jerk. Number 9. John Stamos John Stamos is not just a fun name to say, but is the man to blame for Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen being absent from the Full House revival, Fuller House. A lot of fans of the original series were well aware of why the Olsen twins never returned, but for those of you who don't know, John actually tried to get them fired from the original series when they were still young. And by young, I mean before they were even a full year old. From the very beginning of the sitcom, Stamos complained that Mary-Kate and Ashley were very different difficult children to deal with. Apparently if one wasn't crying and screaming then the other one was. Oh no, a baby screaming and crying uncontrollably. <laughs> Now that is a unique situation. His dislike for the Olsons forced the producers to bring in a new set of twins, and these are John's real complaints that prevented those twins from taking over permanently. Number one, they had red hair. Number two, in his words, they were unattractive babies, and he knew that he made a mistake. That is an awful thing to say about anyone at any age. After realizing that, you know, the Olsons were just kids and that all the other ones were just too ugly to be on TV, that the Olsen twins would be brought back. What's funny is that the studio eventually wanted to fire Ashley Olsen only and keep Mary Kate, but John actually stepped in and blocked that call. It seems that over the years that he turned into something like an uncle for the twins. For any Mary Kate and Ashley fans who are just curious as to where they are, they took a break from acting permanently and have been making waves in the fashion industry. Pretty neat. Number 8. Tom Hanks Who would have guessed the guy that is basically America's dad would be the cause of a man being fired from one of his film sets? Turner and Hooch was a wonderful buddy cop movie starring a young Tom Hanks and this big beautiful doggo named Beasley. When the film first started its production, Henry Winkler, aka The Fonz, aka Barry Zuckercorn, was the director. As the years have gone by, Henry has always said the same thing about the project. He got along much better with Beasley than he did with Mr. Hanks. The set was plagued with creative differences between the men who would argue constantly on set. Henry's directing style just clashed with Tom performance style time and time again. After only 13 days on set, there was an altercation between Tom and Henry that left Henry out of work and Roger Spottiswood stepped in to take his place. Number 7. Alec Baldwin In 2013, Alec Baldwin was attached to star in a Broadway production of the show Orphans alongside Transformers alumni Shia LaBeouf. Now, From day one of rehearsals, Shia and Baldwin were at each other's throats. Shia's problem was that Alec was never never off script. This was something that he considered to be very unprofessional. Shia has since claimed that he was so nervous about the show that he made sure to memorize every single line he had before setting foot on stage on day one. His methods were not reciprocated by Alec who just kind of showed up with a coffee in one hand and the script in the other one, planning to rehearse in the moment. Well, Shia was furious and he apparently yelled at Alec to learn his lines right then, right there. He said, whoa, he's a lead, what's the deal? Why aren't you better at this? 
Well, after a couple of weeks and one particularly rough day where Shia blew up at Alec in front of a ton of cast and crew, Alec took five and he had a meeting with the producers. He said that if Shia wasn't let go, that he was going to quit the project. Producers caved and Shia was canned. In the tabloid, they claimed creative differences, but Shia later shared his side, clearly upset with being dropped as if he meant nothing to the show. Number six, Seinfeld cast. Now, for this entry, there is no one cast member that could be singled out as the individual who tried to get Heidi Swedberg, aka Susan, fired from the series. In the season seven finale of Seinfeld, spoiler alert, Jason Alexander's character, George Costanza, is delivered the news that his wife, Susan, has suddenly passed away. George is thrilled as he's been wanting to leave Susan for a while now, but it turns out off screen, Jason was just as excited. So were Jerry Seinfeld, Michael Richards, and Julia Louise Dreyfus, who made up the other three main cast members. According to Jason, he found it difficult to play off of Susan, claiming that there just wasn't a lot of chemistry between them. And as I said, this was a feeling that was shared with the entire cast. Julia Louis Dreyfus said that it was impossible to have fun with her and her character, and that the producers were planning to write her off at some point in the near future. Well, the gripes of the cast were heard, and her character passes away from licking the glue on cheap wedding invitation envelopes that George insisted they purchase. It is very funny, and it's a great way to get a character written off of a show, but it's just unfortunate for Heidi that the entire cast was like, eh, she's not a vibe. Number five, Jason Momoa. It's no secret that filming Aquaman and its sequel was a bit of a sensitive task. For starters, Amber Heard not only played Jason's love interest in the film, but she was also dealing with the Johnny Depp defamation trial, so a decision had to be made if she was going to continue being involved with DC or if they would just recast her entirely. Well, it turns out that that conundrum was not because of the trial, but it was actually just because of her terrible chemistry with Jason Momoa. Amber Heard has always felt jammed into the DC universe, but we could go on about that forever. Ultimately, the studio never went forward with firing Amber, and it was all thanks to the CEO of Tesla and her former lover, Elon Musk. Back in 2019, Elon had one of his litigators send this scorched earth letter to Warner Brothers, basically threatening to tear the house down if Amber was left out of the sequel. Warner Brothers caved and moved forward. Imagine being so geeky and so rich that you could tell an entire studio what to do for you. You would make millions of movies just for yourself. Despite keeping her job, Amber has continued to hurl allegations against her co-star Jason Momoa to this day, claiming that he was dressing like Johnny Depp on purpose on set to mess with her. But as I've mentioned in previous news breakdowns on that topic, Jason Momoa always looks like Johnny Depp. It's just it's just what some people in Hollywood look like. Number four, Sylvester Stallone. Richard Gere is one of those actors that doesn't really act. Sometimes people just get hired for films because they have the face for it or the style. For Richard, he did not have enough class and moxie to keep a handle on his role in the film Lures of the Flatbush. He was casted to star alongside Rocky Hill himself, Sylvester Stallone, and according to Sly, these two did not get along. Their beef was strong and long-lasting through the entire production, until it finally came to a head when one day Richard was just a little bit too into one scene and grabbed Sylvester aggressively by the collar. When Sly told him to lay off, he laid in instead. Now That scene was being filmed on Coney Island, so when the actors took a minute to take a break, they tried to well, break each other. Sly was eating a hot dog alone in his car, sounds very peaceful, but suddenly Richard Richard stormed in to join him with like half of a chicken dripping in mustard apparently. Despite Sly's warning about mustard, like this whole thing started because of mustard, it dripped all over his pants and in true Rocky fashion, he elbowed Richard in the face and threw him out of the car. The altercation resulted in Richard being fired from the project. Oh no, they had to decide between Richard Gere and Sylvester Stallone. I wonder how quick that meeting was. Number three, Ryan Gosling. The Notebook is considered to be one of the greatest romantic movies ever made. Oddly enough though, the on-screen couple never got along during the shoot. They would fight with each other on set all the time and seem to have completely opposite ideas on how basically everything should play out. One day in particular was pretty exciting for anyone who wasn't involved. Ryan called over the director and demanded that Rachel be replaced by another actress to read her lines with him. In front of 150 crew members, he claimed that Rachel just wasn't giving him anything to work with and they would just constantly yell at each other between takes. Eventually, Ryan 
and asked the director privately if it might be possible to restart the project with a new leading lady and needless to say he was laughed out of the room. As time went on they finished the project and the two actually dated for almost 2 years. The Notebook is now a classic and Ryan Gosling is just Ken. Number 2 America Ferreira In the early 2000s Lindsay Lohan faced a ton of public scandals but one that's not talked about often enough actually took place behind the scenes of a little show called Ugly Betty. Lohan was a guest star on the show in the third season playing Kimmy Keegan. Now Kimmy was supposed to stick around for 6 total episodes but that number was actually shrunken down to 4. The reason being was that her co-star and the lead of the show America Ferreira did not get along with Lindsay Lohan. According According to America and several of the Ugly Betty crew, Lindsay would show up with an entourage of people, usually under the influence of herbs and spices, and the production crew had to repaint her dressing room when she left because it was just so bad in there. One crew member alleged that she would cut images of her own face out of magazines and tabloid articles like she was making a collage or something creepy like that. America claims that one scene took over 30 takes to get right because she flubbed her lines over and over again. Lindsay's team of buddies had have been adamant that America had just too much power and was the sole reason that she was asked to leave the show. Unfortunately, if you do bad things and enough people know about it, hey, karma comes around. And at number one, Lucy Liu. Sony's first foray into the world of Charlie's Angels was a massive success when it released, starring Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu as the main angels. The movie was filled with action, a little bit of comedy, and one of the strangest performances ever delivered from Crispin Glover. Seriously, Seriously, that guy needs help. One interesting addition to the cast was the inclusion of Ghostbusters alumni Bill Murray as the man behind the mic, Mr. Bosley. Apparently, the set was anything but a comedy after Bill found out there was a scene rewritten without his knowledge. In an interview with the news outlet Deadline, Lucy Liu spoke up about her time on set and the situation surrounding herself and Bill. Apparently, Bill was away for a family event when a scene needed to be reshot for the movie, but instead of using a stand-in, they realized they could just film the scene without Bill Murray in it. So it went on and everything was fine. When he returned to find the change was made while he was gone, he was furious. He reportedly shouted at like half of the crew, including Lucy herself. At first, she wasn't sure why he was aiming so many of his comments directly at her. She didn't write the scene, she wasn't the director, but she asked if Bill was talking to her, which sent him into a full-blown meltdown. She decided to speak out on Bill's behavior on set, and he was ultimately written out of the sequel. Lucy is proud for speaking her mind, because at the time she was a relatively unknown actor and is glad that Bill's career seems to have suffered for it, because hey, Lucy was just the first of many people to comment on his behavior, but eh, we'll leave that for another video. Emma Roberts' co-stars said she acted like a spoiled Nepo baby on set when she refused to talk to extras and ordered other celebrities around. Now, one of the worst instances of this is what she did to her American Horror Story co-star, Angelica Ross. Angelica claimed that Emma could be a bully presence on set, once going as far as to misgender her in front of a director. Now, Angelica first spoke out about the alleged incident during an Instagram Live. I'm standing in front of Emma, talking to her like this, and she's in front of me, her back against the mirror. She goes, John, Angelica's being mean, she claimed, seemingly referring to the American Horror Story director John J. Gray. Angelica claimed that Gray then said, okay ladies, you know that's enough, let's get back to work. Now the actress continues saying that Emma then looks at me and she goes, don't you mean lady. Now Angelica said that she feared retaliation if she reported the alleged incident. Angelica admitted that she no longer spoke to Emma after the alleged onset encounter. Her. Then there's Kendall Jenner. Kendall Jenner comes from one of the most famous families in the world, and this has brought her a lot of opportunities. She made her debut at number 16 on Forbes magazine's 2015 list of top earning models, with an estimated annual income of $4 million. Now in 2017, Kendall was named the world's highest paid model by Forbes, which caused some controversy to say the least. Now after this, in an interview she did in 2018 went viral due to her working comments. She said she was never one of those girls who would do like 30 shows a 
season or whatever those girls do. More power to them, but I had a million jobs, not only catwalks, but everything else. Now these comments made many people angry, including fellow models. Model Janita Lapina shared a screenshot of Kendall's quote with her take, saying, We are all hardworking and worked hard to be where we are. Nothing was given to us, she wrote. Now Lapina also posted an Instagram story of herself during a shoot, writing, I gotta work, with the hashtag, hashtag I'm not Kardashian. Moving on to Jamie Lynn Spears. Jamie Lynn Spears didn't get her fame from her parents, but from her sister Britney Spears. In February 2002, at age 11, Jamie Lynn made her acting debut in the Paramount Pictures drama film Crossroads, which starred her sister, Britney Spears. Now, following this, she got her own Nickelodeon show, which was ultimately cancelled after she got pregnant. Now, in July 2021, Worthy Publishing announced her plans to release a memoir, releasing a statement saying, Jamie Lynn's book has been in development for the past 12 months and will allow the world to hear her inspiring stories in her own words for the first time. Now, her memoir entitled Things I Should Have Said Family, Fame, and Figuring It Out was released on January 18th, 2022, but it appeared that Jamie Lynn used her sister Britney Spears's highly publicized struggles in conservatorship to promote her new book, which is just disgusting. Now, Britney actually called her out for this. On Instagram, she made a post with the caption, the two things that did bother me that my sister said was how my behavior was out of control. She was never around me much 15 years ago at that time, so why are you even talking about that unless she wants to sell a book at my expense? Next up is Alyssa Milano. In a long-standing TV feud, Charm co-stars Shannon Dory and Alyssa Milano decidedly did not get along. I think I cried every single night of season two, Shannon once told Entertainment Tonight, adding that their competitiveness got the best of them. Now, in an episode of Shannon's podcast, their third co-star, actress Holly Marie Combs, finally revealed what happened before Shannon left the show. We were told by Alyssa it's her or Shannon, and Alyssa has threatened to sue us for a hostile workplace environment. Holly then went on to say that Alyssa had footage of what made her feel uncomfortable and that she wouldn't be afraid to use it. Now, Shannon was then let go of the show while Holly was seemingly coerced to continue despite not wanting to. They forced me to go back to a show I wanted nothing to do with, she admitted. Now, this wasn't the only issue though, as during a Twitter feud with Alyssa, another co-star, Rose McGowan, tweeted, you threw a fit in front of the crew, yelling, they don't pay me enough to do this sh appalling behavior on the daily. I cried every time we got renewed because he made that set toxic AF. Then there's Kiefer Sutherland. Kiefer Sutherland is the son of Donald Sutherland and Shirley Douglas, who were both successful Canadian actors. Now, Kiefer is a successful actor now, but not all of his co-stars have love for him. In 2010, Freddie Prince Jr. joined Kiefer's action series, 24, and then he gave an interview about his time on the show a few years later, and he didn't have anything positive to say about the star. Freddie said that Kiefer was unprofessional and that he hated every moment of working with him. Now, it turns out that Kiefer was more than a little unprofessional while filming their scenes together. As Freddie says, that's not me talking trash, I'd say it to his face. I think everyone that's worked with him has said that. I just wanted to quit the business after that, so I just sort of stopped, Freddie continued in the interview. Yikes. Now, imagine being so horrible on set that your co-star quit their profession. That is just so messed up. On to Lottie Moss. Lottie Moss is a model who, through her father, is the younger half-sister of model Kate Moss, and that's how she's garnered her fame. Now, she had a modeling career as a teen, and she now does OF, but it seems like she hasn't put two and two together in terms of people who don't have those advantages being resentful of those who do. Now, amid the conversation about the Nepo baby backlash, Lottie took to Twitter not to defend herself or her fellow Nepo babies, but to attack regular people. She said, I'm so sick of people blaming nepotism for why they aren't rich and famous or successful. Obviously, it's not fair that people who come from famous families are getting a leg up because of that, but guess what? Life isn't fair. If you put your mind to something, you can accomplish anything. So instead of being negative about other people's success, go and try to create your own. Now, according to the insider, Kate finds it all highly embarrassing and would rather not be associated with her. 
Dakota Johnson was born to actors Don Johnson and Melanie Griffith and followed in her parents' footsteps. Now, her recent movie, Madam Love, came out and it was just horrible and was met with a lot of criticism. Now, Dakota openly criticized the film as well, but it seems like fellow actor Russell Crowe had a problem with her expressing how she felt and he has called her out. He said, You're telling me you signed up for a Marvel movie and some effing universe for cartoon characters and you didn't get enough pathos. He said in a recent interview with GQ UK, Not quite sure how I can make this better for you. It's a gigantic machine and they make movies at a certain size. Now, Russell, who did declare that he didn't want to make any comments to what anybody else might have said or what their experience was, also pointed out that he has experience with superhero films, having starred in DC's Man of Steel and Marvel's Thor Love and Thunder. He's also in Sony and Marvel's upcoming movie, Kraven the Hunter, which is set in the same universe as Madam Web. If you're expecting this to be some kind of life changing event, I just think you're here for the wrong reasons. Now, however, Russell did acknowledge that doing superhero movies can be challenging at times. You sometimes have to convince yourself a lot more than the internal mechanisms of your character. Now, I don't agree with him here, as Dakota wants to be a storyteller and be attached to her character, but it seems like she didn't have a lot to work with on Madame Web, and she was honest about that. I don't think she should be punished for that. And lastly is Ben Platt. Ben Platt began his acting career in musical theater as a child as he is the son of Julie and Mark Platt. Now his father is a film, television, and theater producer whose credits include Legally Blonde, Into the Woods, La La Land, and the musical Wicked. Now Ben has been linked to the musical Dear Evan Hansen where he played the lead role from 2015 to 2017. Then it was announced that a film version of Dear Evan Hansen would come out in 2021 and guess who was producing? it, Ben's father Mark. So of course Ben once again took on the role of Evan Hansen, but once the trailer dropped, people called out Ben who was 27 years old at the time for playing a high schooler. Now the movie tried to do CGI on him to make him look younger than he really was, but overall it was just really weird. People on the internet also said it was nepotism that got him the role. It could have been a perfect opportunity to give a new young actor a leading role that would change their lives, but Ben took it for himself, all because his father produced it. Now, Ben does not like discussing that he's a nepotism baby at all. A reporter asked the actor about being featured in New York Magazine's Nepo Baby issue. I'm curious, what was your response to that and what do you make of that whole discourse? The reporter asked Ben. We're going to skip right over that if we can, he then responded. According to the Rolling Stone reporter, Ben's publicist then added, if we could just focus on theater camp, that would be great. Thank you. Yikes. <laughs>